Hey what is up guys and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Porsche week This one, well this is the Porsche 911 GT3 This is the 997 model from 2009 And uh, yeah I might have a few hot takes on this one um, I feel like I'm going to get a lot of flack for this uh, I'll, I'll kind of talk about it more as we uh, you know go through the video um, But you know let's get into the basically how to acquire this car and uh, yeah, it's pretty simple this one. So, 160 grand um, you're going to be putting out for this one. 160,000 credits, it's yours from the Porsche dealer. Um, it's actually, I believe, the cheapest model um, of Porsche available in the Porsche dealer. For some reason, it is cheaper than the 996 model. Don't ask me why. Sometimes I kind of wonder where the pricing comes from. Um, I'm not quite sure if it's cheaper to get a 997 in real life over a 996. I've never actually really looked. So for those of you that might not know, this is how it works. We take the bog standard version of each car, a lap around the, you know, the Nordschleife layout of the Nürburgring. Uh, no tunes allowed, no modifications, aero and all that good stuff allowed. Uh, we basically take it as it is from the factory and uh, see where it comes on our lap time leaderboard. Um, then we ship it off over to Japan uh, to the high speed ring and basically see what a fully modified version can do on that lap time leaderboard. And uh, we'll obviously have a bit of a discussion, a bit of a conclusion at the end. So I did say I have a few hot takes about this car and uh, yeah, I feel like I'm gonna get lynched for this one, but basically this is my least favorite generation of Porsche. Now, it sounds really, really stupid to say it is still a good looking car. However, I just do not like the look of it. And I think I can realize why now. The rear end is absolutely stunning. I feel like that is an improvement over the 996. However, when it comes to that front, I just do not like it. There is something about it. And I think personally to me what it is, is they've basically gone and got the old frog headlights from the classic Porsches, put it on a stretched out version, you know, like the 996, and it just doesn't seem right to me. Um, there's just kind of something that seems off about the front end, and uh, I just cannot see, I just cannot tell what it is. I just, <laughs> it just doesn't look that all appealing to me. Now, I think they have improved, especially recently. They've definitely got much better looking. Uh, when it comes to the rear end, like I say, I think it is absolutely stunning. I feel like it's an improvement over the 996. I just feel like a lot of sports cars and supercars from this time suffer from that general kind of blandness these days that a lot of these cars gave off. I feel like a lot of them are very bland in kind of the way they look um, from around, I'd say, the late 2000s to, you know, probably, I'd say probably mid 2000s to sort of, you know, early 2010s. Some of the supercars just looked a little bit boring. However, I feel like around like 2014, um, some of the cars around that area, 2014, 2015, start again, you know, a bit more of extreme aggressive look, whereas a lot of the cars prior to that look very kind of soft and a little bit bland. And I feel like this version of the 911 kind of suffers from the same thing. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm kind of talking about the more standard version. Uh, this GT3 version obviously has all the aero and extra vents you could ever want. And I feel like it's, you know, it, it does improve, you know, the standard look of this model. Um, like I said, the rear end for me is definitely a standout. But let's talk more about how it drives. And it drives very, very good. It's no slouch at all. It feels like an instant improvement of you know over anything really i feel like this is where sort of porsche really started going towards like sort of supercar wise pace um definitely you know this and the gtr were definitely cars that was kind of taking sports cars into supercar territory you know those were the cars that were able to kind of slay stuff like ferraris and you know lamborghinis or at least you know keep on pace with them and they weren't half as expensive you know you'd have like a 300 grand lambo and this porsche you know dulling it out and the porsche would pretty much stick with it you know it might be a little bit slower uh, but it'd be almost there and it still retains that kind of sports car look that the 911 always has now the next model now that is just something completely different 
um, but this model it's definitely sort of a step in the right direction performance wise and even if I can't really appreciate the looks I can definitely appreciate good performance and it's definitely the more sort of controllable sort of sports car version I mean as you've seen you've just gone off there but like I said, I mean, this car is controllable. Even if you go off the track, you feel like it's not just going to instantly sort of throw you in the barrier like some of the, you know, older models uh, would probably do. And, you know, in terms of performance, it's definitely a step up um, from the 996, which obviously came before. Um, the GT3 being, you know, an all-around good car, um, and I can see why people kind of class it as a dark age, and this is kind of sort of, you know, the the renaissance this is where it's kind of all coming back you know they've got that classic front look to it uh whilst retaining you know a more sleeker i guess sportier look you know it's definitely not as bulky um so yeah really really good in terms of its performance the brakes are there the handling's there you know it's still happy to get its rear end out don't get me wrong you know all of the 911s are like that um but again it's just as if each sort of generation we go through it becomes more and more sort of you know where the driver doesn't have to constantly wrestle with the car i mean that original turbo looking back to how this one handles you know you can really feel where sort of the improvement in technology really does kind of kick in to assist the driver even you know i drive with all the assists off in the game but there just still feels like there's always something there i mean the aero definitely you know doing its job to keep the car planted and um, get it through the corners as quick as possible the brakes are perfect the acceleration on this thing is where the you know the main step up is sort of when you're leaving the corners this thing just seems to fly out of them um, no problem whether you've got the back end out or not this thing accelerates and top end well it's definitely getting closer to sort of uh, supercar territory i believe i was hitting in terms of like you know it's normal speed i think i was hitting something like 170 to 1 sort of 80 around that mark the original topping out around about 145 to 150 i believe um, so definitely you know creeping into that sort of supercar territory for a, you know a fraction of the cost and i feel like the real pioneers of that um, were definitely sort of the porsche 911 uh, gt3 models and sort of you know stuff like the gtr that you know the all sorts of additions the gtr had um, and i feel like it's really sort of where does where is the boundary of sports car and supercar anymore and i feel like this is that kind of you know period um you know where it was really kind of prominent and then obviously sort of you know hypercars came along um obviously they've always been around but i'm talking like real real like insanity uh hypercars you know stuff like when the the three main ones came which was what the porsche 9118 uh the la ferrari and the uh, the mclaren um i remember all them coming out around i believe like 2013 2014 um, and they just basically shook up the sort of hypercar supercar world um, whereas sort of sports cars and supercars were able to kind of run together hypercars just came in and you know kind of destroyed um, destroyed a lot of them so it's definitely kind of that you know a big step in advancements when it comes to performance of cars and you really do feel it with the you know with this model here the 997 so definitely no slouch in terms of its you know straight out of the box performance and the aero definitely doing exactly what you want it to do and while it's still a handful it's still very very enjoyable now i did actually go back and look at the real life lap time this car set and i believe we uh, the standard model of this uh, set something like a i think like a 740 and you will see my lap time soon um so it's like very very close but i believe it was damp when it ran um, but you know it's kind of cool to see you know just how close Gran Turismo and the real world really is uh, when you kind of put in lap times in here and it kind of gives me an idea of where to improve so it's pretty cool to you know look into those kind of details. Interior wise it's definitely you know getting there it may sound weird but it's getting there now it still suffers from sort of like that, that kind of like bland look i mean it's already starting to look dated and that's the thing as technology advances so quickly even cars from like only like a decade or so ago you know are starting to look dated already um, obviously you've got you know your cool little screen in the middle and such and it is genuinely looking like a proper sports car now inside of the interior but it's already starting to look dated which is kind of strange to say uh, but you'll kind of you know you'll see why as we you know kind of look at some of the other kind of more modern porsche models um however it's definitely a step above stuff like the 996 and uh, the 993 in terms of you know interior i'd really genuinely do like it 
Um, but for me, the 930 still has the most, you know, awesome kind of alive interior of the bunch. This kind of sort of sits just below that. So here are your individual sectors. We did an overall time of 7 minutes 37.797. So again, an improvement. And this is definitely where, you know, like I said, these sports cars are getting into supercar territory. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean when we kind of look at where this car places. Now, this one actually goes in the 600 category. So you won't actually see the other 911s there. So officially, the leader of 500 is still the 2001 GT3. And obviously this one comes in 11th in our 600 leaderboard, which is definitely not bad considering, you know, three years earlier, a Ferrari F430 is something I would have classed more of as, a, you know, a supercar. Three years later, this thing comes along and it beats it. So it's pretty, you know, insane that we're starting to see where sports cars are really starting to get into territories of like Ferraris, Lamborghinis and all that kind of thing. So this car and this design may bring back some nostalgia for some. It was in Need for Speed Undercover way back when. I mean, I think about 2008, 2009. I believe it was a GT2 version in that game. So, yeah, definitely awesome to really customize this. It was quite a bit of options, really. And I feel like it just adds to the bulkiness of the car. It definitely really has that, you know, aggressive, extreme custom Porsche styling. Um, in terms of performance... It was just an absolute bullet. So let's go and have a look at a high speed ring lap. As you can see, we are gonna fly straight down the main straight. And this is the first time since the 930 Turbo. So way back in the first Porsche review of you know the 911 series we've got going on here, that a Porsche has topped out at 200 miles per hour. So finally, we have broke that 200 mile an hour barrier for the first time in a while. And it's pretty awesome to see in terms of grip. Well, it definitely had it, that's for sure. This thing really seemed to just stick to the track. Now, don't get me wrong, it's still a bit of a handful, but it really felt like, you know, you was in a proper full-blown race car for the road. It was definitely no slouch the way it went through the corners. You know, the acceleration, the speed, it's just sort of upped by, you know, 10 times what it was from standard. Um, you really will feel a massive sort of difference and it feels as if we've sort of turned a road car into a full-blown race car at this point. So it was definitely an awesome lap. It felt very quick. But overall, can it really top the turbo, which has obviously led the leaderboard since day one of the 911 reviews? Let's go ahead and find out. And you know what? It did. Finally, some of the other 911s have beat the original. Uh, it's pretty gutting to see because that original, you know, 930 was a monster. However, the 997 has come along and beat it by just under two full seconds. So really awesome to kind of see that even in modified territory, you know, the cars are starting to improve now at this point. Um, so real, real fun. And that's from a naturally aspirated engine as well. So at the start, like I said, the looks just wasn't there. However, when customized, for me, this car becomes really, really attractive uh, for some reason. Um, I just feel like the customization we're giving in Gran Turismo sort of just gives us what I really want from this car. You know, bigger, wider, more aggressive. And I feel like that's where it really needed sort of a bit of a looking into. And as I've kind of used it, I've kind of got used to, you know, the big circle, you know, frog lights at the front on this stretch body. So overall, a very, very good car and definitely one you should look into getting. So that is going to be the end of the video. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Uh, don't forget that the channel memberships, they're up now if you want your builds featured and stuff. Also, feel free to donate. Links will be in the bio. I genuinely appreciate everything. Cheers, guys. See you later. Peace.